I got something to shout about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is so good. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Faithful, reliable, trustworthy. Oh, he's faithful. Won't ever change self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just happened to be my God. Thank you, Lord. And my only source. And my God yes. can do. Yes. Lord, Lord have mercy. God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look like we got the same one, huh? Glory. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Well, now. Thank you, Lord. I Hallelujah. guess I'll share him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Nobody like it. Hallelujah. Nobody like you, Lord. For the Lord is good. You are good.
teamwork I pray for you you pray for me hallelujah while you are standing if you're not standing please stand for a moment and properly receive this woman of God that uh, has graced my life for 39 years and uh, 
It's just getting good and good. Sister Ann. Praise God. Glory to God. I love you this morning. And you can't do nothing about it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love you this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, I need you. We need each other. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, come on, everyone in the building. Help me to welcome our internet viewers this morning. Come on, let's give them a big VLCC welcome. Woo! Glory to God. You are welcome to tune in to our service today. We thank you for tuning in. Praise God. You will never be the same. We have a saying here, if you come through those doors for the first time, you will never be the same. Since you tuned in this morning, I guarantee you, you will never be the same. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in with us this morning. We pray you will be blessed. Hallelujah. And I know you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Everybody in the building, raise your hand. Internet viewers, put your hand toward the TV. Something good is going to happen to you today. Do you receive it? Come on, Hallelujah. clap your hands and tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Well, you may be seated. Something good is going to happen. Praise God. Pastor told us on, on Wednesday night that the greater is going to happen to us. Greater love, greater joy, greater peace, greater favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greater is all born our lives. Hallelujah. Well, praise Hallelujah. God. These are our announcements. Students and teachers of children's ministry, we will resume, resume classes on next Sunday, January 11th, from 5 until 6.30 p.m. Praise God. Listen for details re regarding participation on our 2015 Resurrection Day program. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the future, we have announcements to come. Hallelujah. I want to remind you, you can make your contributions before and after service with your debit or your credit card in our bookstore. The list of the interfaith basic need, caring needs is listed, is posted in the bookstore as well as the fellowship hall. Praise God, our regular scheduled services here at the church. Sunday school is at 9 a.m. Our morning worship is at 10 a.m. Every second and fourth Sunday, we have our children's ministry. Uh, this Tuesday will be our teens ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our teens will, minister, will meet in here in the, in the main sanctuary, and then you will convene back in the fellowship hall. Every Tuesday is our midweek service at 7 p.m. Thursday, we have a noonday class. Hallelujah. Thank God for the noonday class. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. And every Friday, praise God, which is the most important meeting of the week, which is prayer at 6 p.m. Praise God, praise God. Well, that ends our announcements right now. We'd like to meet, greet, and welcome all of our first-time visitors. If you are here for the first time, would you please stand to be recognized? All of our first-time visitors, praise God. Praise God. Welcome, well, come have on. you. Come on, give them some love. Give them a BLCC welcome. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise welcome. God. Good to yeah, have you. come on, give us some love. Glory to God. Welcome, praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Good to have you. Glory to God. Come on. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes, give them some love. Give us some Hallelujah. love. Hallelujah. Good to have you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Yes, give them some love. Glory. Praise God. Praise God. Well, on behalf of Pastor Douglas and myself and the VOCC family, we would like to welcome you to our church. Praise God. This is a place of hope and victory in a difficult world for all people. We have a saying here, young man, young lady. Well, those of you who don't know, this is Brother Styles' daughter. Praise God. The one who, isn't it wonderful? Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. But young man, since you came through those doors, you'll never be the same. <laughs> I guarantee you after today, you will never, never be the same. 
We want to thank you for choosing BLCC this morning as your place of work. Thank you for visiting with us. If you would take that card you received, fill it out. Take it to our bookstore. We have a gift for you as a token of saying thank you for visiting with us today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, let's give God a praise for our visitors this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Janae, it's so good to see you, girl. Beautiful girl. Praise God. Brother Styles, I know you're happy. Sister Styles, I know you're happy. Glory to God. (laughs) Glory to God. Isn't it wonderful? Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, one more time. Let's give God a praise for our visitors this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, if you are celebrating a birthday, if you've already celebrated or you will celebrate your birthday, I want all of our January birthdays. Please stand to be recognized. All of our January birthdays. Woo! Yes, come on. All right, come happy on. birthday. Woo! All right, just yeah. win. Woohoo! <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Well, on behalf of Pastor Douglas and myself and the BLCC family, we would like to wish you a happy birthday. If you've celebrated it or you will celebrate your birthday. And we wish you, pray that you have many, many, many more. Praise God. Come on, let's give God a praise for our January birthdays. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Well, I want everyone to stand up, and I want you to put your hands together, and I want you to shop to the top of your voice. Come on, let's receive our pastor, Pastor Douglas! Hallelujah. Happy New Year. Year. Glory to God. It's good to be alive, isn't it? (laughs) In a brand spanking new year. God is good. We still here. Look at you, still smiling. And you're smiling in spite of, in spite of your challenges. <laughs> but this is the year of the greater. Hallelujah. The song says, You ain't seen nothing yet. The best. Is yet to come. And so I'm excited about what God is doing this year. I am so uh, elated that I'm here to be a part of it, to see what God is going to do these next 12 months in our lives. And uh, so I'm going I'm to readdress the address uh, and cover some things I didn't cover even on Wednesday night in our New Year's Eve service that goes along with this that I believe is going to really help us uh, get this thing to a whole nother level, praise God. I'm excited, praise God. Glory to God, hallelujah. And so I I, I want you to uh, uh, fine-tune your ear, the inner and outer, and listen to what God is speaking on today, because he has a word for this house today, and uh, your lives will will be radically changed. The Spirit of God is so neat, because he's the teacher, Um, and he knows the Bible because he wrote it. And no matter how many times you read it, you don't know it. The Bible, the Bible will keep you humble. Because you go back, you go, you know what? I read that 15 times. I didn't even see that. Yeah, well, well, when you go back on, on time number 122, <laughs> you're going to find something else you didn't know. The Bible will keep you humble. Because it, it shows you that, that there's a God that has so much in him, you can't get it all the first time. You got to keep coming back from it. You got to keep pulling that onion. Layer after layer after layer after layer, it's still more to, to be gained a gleam from the word of Almighty God. So I'm excited about what God is going to speak on this morning. If you take a moment and just greet uh, your neighbors for a minute or so, then we'll come back. If you watch my internet, we'll be back, back in a moment. We just like the fellowship here, and we'll get it into the word of Almighty God. Yeah. Hey. 
Right there. In 2015. Praise God. We forgot to record the one from Wednesday night. <laughs> but we have a good copy for you by the next time you come, praise God. <laughs> with the right with the right word on there. <laughs> God is so good. All my heaven bound people. Thank you. All right. I sound, sound like the house right there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you need to know for sure. It's going to be interesting when we all get to heaven and see who's there and who's not there. Some you thought were, won't. Some you thought wouldn't, will. So that's why it's good to make sure you get there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, today, it is the first Sunday of this brand new year. 
we're honored and privileged that you allowed us to live to see this awesome day. We don't take that lightly, oh God. That means there's still purpose for us being here. And you're not through with us yet. So we yield to the Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us and direct us and lead us now. But you're perfect for our lives. I think Father David Hart, this is the heart of good soil. And the word that is spoken on today when I fall to the ground unfulfilled, they say, yield much fruit. In the lives and hearts of these people, we'll leave this place not challenged but changed in your presence. Holy Spirit, as always, I stand before you as a barefooted priest. Whatever you want to say on today, I will quote heaven. I will say exactly what you want me to say. All I ask you, do one thing, what you promise, confirm your word. And Lord, make thyself known in this house today by stretching forth thy hand and healing. That sign that one may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. We're going to praise you in advance for everything about to receive right now by your spirit. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of, of the Lord. I believe I've said before that God is good. But I want to say it again in case the devil didn't hear me. God is good. He's just flat out good all the time with his faithful self. I wanted to reiterate uh, the, the address God had given us for this house for um, uh, this new year, uh, for some that were not here and then for some that were, uh, that are watching my internet, uh, we did not uh, stream uh, New Year's Eve night. And so I want to make it uh, uh, very clear to you what God is saying for this house and what he's going to do in this house and through the people of God. Remember what, what, we, what, what we read in, in, in John uh, 11, uh, 40, it said, but if, if, thou, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. But there are conditions there. If thou wouldest believe, which means it's, it's what? It's optional. Uh, it's up to the person. Uh, if you choose not to believe, it's not going to work for you. It's a, they, I thank God that this is a, it's an individual walk. The old folks say every tub got to sit on his own bottom. Hallelujah. And so, and, and so it is a decision that we have to make that when I hear, if I, if I trust the man, the man of God, that he's hearing God. And I'm, a, I'm assuming that you believe I hear God because you hear. Hallelujah. Then whatever he's speaking has to be authored from the source of the Holy Spirit. And it must be what God is speaking for this house. Every, every church doesn't have the same word for this year, uh, but, but, but for this house, here at 639 Smith Lane, in LC, Texas, uh, we're here to hear this word, and the word for this house this year is we can, the main theme is his glory shall be seen in 2015, but the subtopic of the uh, supporting Word is the year of the greater. And turn me again to the book, book of John, chapter 1. And I want to show you something, especially in that, in, in that fifth chapter what God, uh, that we didn't get to uh, on, on a Wednesday night. Uh, but John, chap, chapter 1, is the, these are the verses that the Lord gave me uh, in reference to uh, this particular uh, uh, expectation. Now here's, here's, here's how I roll. I own it. I took this word as mine. Hello, somebody. And I'm going to have what God said. Hallelujah. I'm having this. I mean, you can do what you want to do, but I'm having this, this word Glory to God. in my life this year. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All of us need some greater things happening. I'm going to show you a scripture here, here in a minute. I, I had, I, I had uh, gotten the scripture for offering time, but uh, I, I sense the spirit of God is not going to let me wait that long. Uh, I got to bring it forth now. So I just do what the Lord said do because he's paying the bills. You know. But here in John chapter, chapter 1 and verse 15, this whole setting was the man that was at the pool of Bethesda got healed. The Jews had an issue because he got healed on the Sabbath day. For one thing, they had an issue with that. You know, they were, they were, they were strictly by the law. 
by the book. You know, we, we, we want this by the book. And Jesus always messed up the book because he did what the Spirit of God told him to do. Now, if the Spirit of God is the one that's directing it, it's always right. Uh, catch that one. If the Spirit of God is the one that's directing it, it's always right. Because I want to ask you a question. When was the Holy Ghost ever wrong? And the Bible said, for as many as are what? Led by what? The Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. And so he said in the book of uh, uh, John, uh, I think it's chapter uh, uh, 14, there's like right there. He, he said, and he will lead you, 16, 13. He will lead you and guide you into all what? Truth. Well, what is truth? Whatever God said. Whatever God said, that's truth. And the Holy Spirit job is to lead and guide you into all truth. In the, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse uh, 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 9, 10, 11 right there, it says that, says that he, he even searches the deep, the deep things of God. To reveal them unto us. He goes inside of God. See what else God has thought of. And he, he reveals that to us. Isn't yeah, that powerful? We are the end of what God is thinking. Oh, Jesus. We are the end of what God is thinking. Whatever God is thinking, the Holy Spirit is trying to get it to us because we are the end of God's thought. Everything on God's mind right now is us. Do you know God put eternity on hold and stuck a thing in there called time? Just for us? And he's going to hold eternity up until we finish our little thing and go back to the Father? Then, then the Bible said time will be no more? We are, we are all that's on God's mind. Everything God is doing right now is geared towards us. We're the end of whatever God is speaking. Whatever God's thoughts are there about us. Matter of fact, he said, well, I even know the plans I have for you. To give you an expected end. Well, I expect good. I don't know what you expect. <laughs> all the time. Hello, somebody. Now, I get what I expect. Because that's another word of saying that that's my what? That's my faith. That's another word, that's another way of saying what that, that that's my trust in God that He's going to do that. Because trusting and faith is the same, same thing. Have faith in God, have trust in God. Have confidence in God. Know that God's going to do what he said. God can't lie. Hello. Now he may be a minute in performing it. Anybody in the middle of a minute right about now? It's like people say, you know, Jesus coming soon, okay? It's only been a couple thousand years now. And the Bible said what? A thousand years, that's what? One, one day with him. That's why the Bible said what? Through faith and what? Patience. In the book of James said, let patience have a perfect work. Complete itself in you. You got to have patience with God as you can be frustrated. And God don't move just because you start crying. If that's the case, I'll just start crying right now. <laughs> right? We just take our... Ah! If we knew that work every time to get, get from God what we want from him, all of us be, be boohooing all the time. It don't work like that. I have to believe that the God I've committed my life to is faithful. And he will not lie to his son, who is the apple of his eye. That he'll stop eternity to get me what I want. Oh, Jesus. As long as my desires are in line with his word. This is the confidence that we have, 1 John 5, 14. If we ask anything, what? According to his will. We know, not wondering, we know that he hears us. And because we know that he hears, we know we got it. And people of God, when you find it in the word, that's your yes. 
You don't pray to find out if God will do it for you when you read it in the word. His word is his yes. All the promises of God are in what? Yea and what? Amen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's the when that messes up. That's why he said, don't be weary, what? In well-doing, for what? In due season at the opportune time when God gets ready. You will reap if you're still there. You didn't faint, become discouraged, threw in the towel, say, you know what? I didn't think it took all this. When I first got saved, I believe and get it just like that. Uh Uh-huh, all of us. When we first got saved. Man, God was Johnny on the spot. But then God gets to play where now he wants you to trust him even if you don't see it yet. Knowing that you will see it because God can't lie, time is it's just, it's just, a, it's just a matter of time. So when I, when I understand that I have a word from God that's reinforced and witnessed in my spirit by the Holy Ghost, because the Bible said the spirit bears witness with what? Our spirit. The Holy Ghost confirms in our spirit what God has said. I don't look to my head to find out. I look at my spirit. What is the witness of my spirit? And when I know that I know, I know. You can't change me. You can't change me. Conditions can't change me. Circumstances can't change me. Just because it looks worse can't change me. Because I have a word from God. Oh, Lord. And so shall his word be that go forth out of his mouth. It shall not return void. But it will prosper in the thing where unto he sent it. Because God is not a man. He should lie. Not a son of man. He should, he, he should what? Repent. If he said it, he'll make it good. That's why I'm still here. Because I know the faithfulness of my God. I didn't hook up with a wimp. Or somebody's trying to find themselves. God know who he is. Hallelujah. Almighty. All powerful. All knowing. That's my God. Hallelujah. He said lost my spot here. I just got to get excited. See, I preach by a letter. One of the greatest influences on, on, on my life, I have to sit it every now and then, besides Brother Hagin, was, is Norval Hayes. And I say he is Norval Hayes because Norval Hayes is still alive. You might not see him as much now because he's in, the, in his latter, latter years, but, but trust me, brother, brother Hayes is still going strong. And uh, I, I've always been intrigued by his ministry because he just flat out just trust God. And I've, I've seen him. I've, I remember we were over at, at Lakewood at, uh, one, one, one night um, and uh, he was getting ready to minister. And he is so confident in, in, the, in the Holy Ghost that he don't care what you think about him. And he just stand there. He, he said, well, the Lord hadn't given me nothing yet. So he's he just standing there. So I'm just waiting for the Lord to say something. Give me, give me what to preach, what to teach. He's just standing there. Look at you and you look at him like you're looking at me right now. <laughs> he said, well, the Lord just gave it to me. He'll take off. And now you talk about a man that preaches Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But a novel. That's what he preached. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the manifestations in his ministry is just off the chain. He was sharing, I'm listening to one of his videos the other day. He was sharing about how that uh, they, was, they was in a revival in, in Dallas for, it lasted over a month uh, back uh, at Robert Tilson, Tilson's church. And uh, this woman brought her son up that his feet was born as people his people, people were turning backwards. And uh, he just put the little boy's feet in his hands and prayed 
and told, told the mother and the father, now you, you, you just thank, thank, you just give God praise uh, for your son being healed. And we don't pray for somebody else. The next night, the lady showed back up and said, we put our son to bed. We did what you told. We just praise God for, for our, his healing. Put the child to bed. Got the next morning, we sit down and get ready to eat breakfast and look down at our son's feet and they were normal. God had flipped the feet around where they were just normal. See, that's, that's the guy I, I, I got the instructions on teaching them how to live and not, not die. Got that from, from, from a normal. That's, that's, that's why my wife's sister is still living. Because I told her if I could teach you how to talk, you don't have to die. What good does, does me to pray for you and then you talk opposite? You're going to have what you say. Because you're with you more than I'm with you. And he's, that's, his, that's his manner of casting out devils. Oh, Lord. He said, Mel's. He said, give me 10 to 15 minutes with him. I, I get the devil out of him. I don't care if it's a drug devil, alcohol devil. It, 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 it don't matter. The devil is defeated. We got the victory over him. He's whipped with his little sleeves itself. Hallelujah. You can't walk in fear. God gives us boldness in his presence. You know who you are. He said they were giving this man grief in John 1 because he got healed on the Sabbath day. You told him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he got up and did exactly what Jesus told him. He just obeyed the instructions. He just obeyed the instructions. He just obeyed the instructions. He just obeyed the instruction. Got up and walked off on the Sabbath day. They, they, they gave him grief about it. And his disciples, they were just, you know, they were amazed. But then he says here in this 50th verse, Jesus answered and said unto, unto him, this man that was now back talking to Jesus again because they asked him who would heal him. And he said, I, I don't really know what, the, what guy's name is. All I know is he, 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 he told me to get up and walk, and I got up and walked. So, <laughs> you ain't got to know my name. As long as you got what you want, right? Hello? So now he ran back into Jesus. And so Jesus, he said, Jesus was sharing with him. He said, you know, I said to him, um, uh, because I said unto thee, I saw thee. I'm the sick of my This is the thing. This is a different story. I'm, I'm, I'm quoting the one in five, and we in one. We'll get to five in a minute. But this is Nathaniel. He's on the, on the tree hanging out. Jesus saw him in, in the spirit and told the disciples, he's, there he is over there. He's a man that has no guile in him. It isn't good when, you, when, when God can talk good about you. <laughs> That's what he did with, uh, with uh, uh, Job. He said, you know, Job is an upright man. Excuse me, he shines evil. And let me help you here. Just because you're doing the right thing don't mean you won't be challenged. Uh, uh, who was behind the devil messing with Job? God. Don't say it. It's, it, it, it. it's okay. God was behind it. The devil said, I wouldn't mess with him, but you got this head around him and I can't touch him. He said, have you considered my servant Job? It was God's idea. Read your Bible. Have you considered my servant Job? He said, well, I really have, but I can't get to the brother. You know when God don't want nobody to touch you, they can't touch you. They can't touch you. He said, yeah, I have, but you got the head. He said, look, I'll take the heads down. I give you access to it. Because the devil had challenged God. He said, Look, I bet I can make him curse you. So I said, Oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's on now. I let the hedge down. I let you have access to him. Just don't take his life. And boy, the devil went crazy. Killed his children, his 
took his stuff, all his animals, everything, then put balls on him, sickness and disease on, on the man, and then he had this crazy wife that uh, told the man to curse God and die. And she told her own husband to die. That's a crazy woman. Who won't be married to a woman like that? Come on, brother. Start. Man up. <laughs> I'm married to somebody going to tell me to curse God and just going to tell me to die? Oh, no. Oh, no. Good thing he didn't listen to her. He could have taught Adam a lesson. <laughs> and the Bible says, in all that happened to Job, he did not sin against God with his mouth. And all that God allowed the devil to do to Job, God knew Job had what it took to withstand all the challenges. Now, he had a little pity party a couple times there, you know. You know, and, and uh, the, then by the end of the book, God jacked him up. You know, and jacked his friends up. You, you know, misery love company. And them three little brothers got around him and bought him, and, 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 and they really tried to put a guilt trip on him. Search your own heart. If your own heart does not condemn you, don't let nobody else do it to you. You got people always finding something wrong with you. Is your heart at peace? Does God have a problem with you? If you got a problem with you, forget them. And those folks that fool you on them. That's why every man has to search his own heart. Because people are always trying to put guilt trips on you. Because why? They're doing it by what? Comparison. I said before, I'm going to say it again. This life is not about comparison. Every man's journey is different. Your journey is customized just for you. And you got to keep your, your life lined up with the word and the instruction of the Holy Ghost that God has given you on a daily basis. Not what sister so-and-so doing or brother so-and-so is doing. You walk your own road. And stop crowding somebody else's road out trying to be a copy. Be who you are. Know who you are. I'm not trying to be like nobody. Because can't nobody be a better me than me. And I'm never apologizing for who I am and how God made me. Because I was made in perfection. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm the best God could do. How dare me degrade or lower myself because of some other man's opinion. You realize how cheap Opinions are. You can get them on sale all the time. <laughs> Everybody got an opinion. You live by men's opinion, you'll be a nutcase. What has God said about you? You got 66 books of God talking about who you are. If you spend all your time finding who you are by the, by the word, you ain't got time to, to hear nobody else trying to put you down or talk you down or trying to bring you down to, to that level with that crap mentality. I don't roll like that. I'm secure in myself. Glory to God, hallelujah. I'm secure in my call. I know what I've been called to do, what I've been born to do. I'm living what I was born to do right now. 
I was a machinist for 15 years. I knew that was not my end. Like taking a bath with your socks on, just don't feel right. I know I was born to do this, what I'm doing right now. I don't even need a Bible. I can stand flat for the right here and throw this thing away, and I can preach for the next 20 days and never repeat myself. Because my instructions were, open your mouth, I'll speak. He said, in the same hour, I will give you what to say. That's why my, my but hey, he just sat down. I mean, man, he just said, you know what, I'm waiting. Which means what? He had nothing to prepare. How many of you get nervous if you ain't got a lot of stuff written down? Many times God took all that stuff I studied and didn't use none of it when I stood up. I'm sitting going, now why you have me do all this studying then? He knows every person that walked through those doors and exactly what each person's need is. And if I'm sent to the Holy Ghost, I will flow with him and get them help. Verse trying to stick to my notes because I done put my time in. I done invest all them hours. I ain't going to waste this. And then you miss God and the people don't get help because you're trying, to, you, you're trying to carry out your agenda. I thought you was yielded. I'm trying to help some ministers up in here. It's called trust. I trust him. You know, God will give you one word and don't give me anything else with it until you stand up. It's called having faith for the next word. <laughs> All right, Lord, I, I, I have said I. What comes after I? I. <laughs> Having faith for the next word. That's trust. He said, look, man. You believe because you saw, because I told you about being on, on, on that tree. Look at the rest of this verse. This, this is so powerful. And then uh, I want to read this other verse because I, that's the other verse I want to share with you that the Lord showed me. Because it's really going to help you uh, 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 become even more, more, more faithful. So we, have a, we have a good group here. I call it a good team. Because there's no I in, in team. Nobody here is trying to, to make a name for themselves. We just want God's purpose to prevail in this house. Glory to God. Look, 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 look what he says. He says, uh, last part of the verse, thou shalt see greater things. Somebody say greater things. Greater say greater things. greater things. Now think about some things you need to, for God to do. He's been doing all right, but you want him, him, him to take it out to another level. Come on, say he hello. You've you been, you know, you've you been, you, you been making it each month financially. But, but it'd be a lot better if you took it to what? Another level. I mean, God been doing some things in your body where you're able to function, but it would be nice if you just did everything. Come on. Wholeness. Perfection, come, entire, nothing broken, nothing missing, just whole, everything working. Everything working, everything working to perfection. That's what he died for. That's what he bled for. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see why the Old Testament saints could, should have a better covenant than us. When they came out of Egypt, there was not one fever body in the whole bunch. He even told them, if you just do what I say, I'll even take sickness away from the midst of you. What? Not even a threat to you. 
Now, the Old Testament saint had that kind of agreement with, with the Lord. Hello, saint. What about us? We have a better covenant based on better promises. Come on here. I'm not letting them off the hook. You done died and bled and got up. Now you're at the right hand of the Father, enforcing and reiterating and reminding God again, I paid for that. I paid for that. In the Bible, say he ever lived to make intercession. So here's the Lord sitting on, 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 on the right hand of the Father. And he almost got a crooked in that because he's in the Lord's ear. Talking about us all the time. I paid for that, Lord. I paid for that, Father. I paid for that for, for Cynthia to have that complete holding and, and sound in the Bible. I paid for that, Lord, for, 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 for uh, uh, Ernest to have that in his body. I paid for that, Lord. For Deborah to have complete holding in the body. I paid for that, Lord. You want to see, see my stripes again? Because the Bible just said, well, put me in what? Remembrance. The clatter of God may be justified. Hey, Lord, didn't I tell you? I paid for Carol's total healing. So she can chase Jonathan all around that house. He said, you are going to see what? Greater things. Say, never greater things. Then you thought this was something. You thought you were doing all right already? He said, look out. I got, I got, I got some greater things. For now, go to, go to uh, John, John, John 5. The year of the greater. The year of the greater. Greater things. Greater things. Greater things. Greater finances. Greater help. Greater relationships, greater peace, greater joy, greater promotions, raises, increase. John 5, verse 20. This is, this is the story about the man and, and the pool of Bethesda. All right? And now he's talking to the disciples because they were amazed. Look, look what he says here. For the Father, glory to God, loveth the Son and showeth him how many things? I got news for you. Not just that Son. All the sons. He said, if you seek, you should what? Fine. Knock. Ask. He will hunger and thirst, desire to know. See, God's not just gonna just not gonna reveal his heart to casual glances. He rewards seekers. Those who are hungry and thirsty for the things of God. They let all them line, God. I want more. Of you. Paul said, I counted all as what? Nothing that I might know you. I don't care about my degrees and all my titles and all the, all the accolades that I, I've received. I want to know you. He said, uh, Look here, man. Um, he showed the son all things. And then he didn't stop there. That himself doeth, and he will show him. Lord have mercy. Here we go. Greater, greater works. Just said in, in John 1, greater things, greater works. Hello. Greater work. Watch this now. For what purpose? Marvel, the word, there's a word, be astonished or to be amazed. This is the year of amazing things. Yeah. 
you thought you seen something already. Now you're going to be amazed. Jesus said, he showed me all, he showed me all things, but now he's going to show me some greater things than these so you can be amazed, astonished. Just, I mean, just in awe. Oh, wow. Man, look at God, man. I tried everything I could to get that thing to work, and the Lord just come and go, boop, and it's done. But now you got to go there and read what? John 11, verse 40. He said, did not I tell you that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest what? See the glory of God. I'll go to Acts 10 just a minute. Uh, you're getting your offering scripture right now. Okay. But I need to put it here because this is, this is critical. Some of you have been in a, in a challenge for a while. We all can testify. Trust me, if, if I had to have time to testify about all the stuff that's, that uh, the enemy has tried to, to do against me to shut me up. But see, um, my tongue was tied up long enough when I was a setterer. And the Lord loosed my tongue to preach his word. And I'm not about to shut up now. Oh, no, I don't care what he tried. I'm not about to shut up now. And boy, he has pushed me. Challenged me. But I won't stop. Got worried on it. Went to the book, took a look, got hooked, came, he took a ship. He just ain't going to happen. Either God lied or he's telling the truth. I choose to believe that God is telling the truth. So in the story, right there, done. And I do what I have to do in the meantime until I get manifestation. But I'm not quitting on God and quitting on, on, on his word. And I'm not backing off or backing down. M matter of fact, I'm getting louder. See, what they haven't figured out yet, every time he messes with me, that's like fuel on the fire. I just get challenged. Yes, let's get it on. Go to Acts 10. Just for a moment, I, I want to show you something here. Carol, it's time. It's time. Verse 1, Acts 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. We're talking about no music band here. All right. <laughs> he was a soldier. Praise the Lord. Verse 2, a devout man and one that feared God, look at this, with all his house, with all his house, with all his house, wasn't just him, everybody in the house. Joshua said, as for me and my what? House. If you're in my house, you're going to know about Jesus. Amen. You might not like it or you might get attitude, but you're going to know about him or you will hear it. Yeah. Ain't like, I don't want to hear about that. You tell you, she said it all the time. I don't care what you say. I'm saying it again. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 6, 7. Right on the doorpost. Put it on the walls. Talk about when you come in. Talk about when you go out. Just keep talking about it. See, now, now they apparently let the kids back them off. We don't want to push him. You better push him, else there'll be a pusher. And jails are full of pushers. Come on, saints, we got a man up. 
He said he was a devout man who feared God with all his house. You know what the Bible said about uh, uh, Abraham? He said, I can trust my covenant to come to Abraham because I know Abraham would teach his children. Do you realize your blessing is tied up in how you handle your children? That God has trusted you with? It's not just about you. Well, I'm going on the church. You just stay at home. You are. Oh. Who run the house? Who paying the bills? Who putting clothes on them? Getting them a pillow to, to, to lay their head on. And you're going to neglect your responsibility to Almighty God because they don't want to? And I'm going to leave. You just stay at the house. When you get to heaven, praying you make it. You're going to stand before God. And God, the first thing God's going to bring up, the children I gave you. Why didn't you tell them about me and make sure that they had every opportunity to hear about me? Why did you neglect your responsibility and leave them while you come to receive and your child is being left to the devil? Nobody's shouting right now. Please stop running around the building. You are held responsible, parents, for raising those children and giving them every opportunity at an early age to get to know Christ. Our mom and daddy made us do stuff we didn't want to do. Come on. Hello. I'm a preacher's kid. They give you had no school work. You're going to church. When you get home, get in them books, get it done, because when, it, when it's time to go to church, you're going to church. We talking about church that didn't last to, four, to, to, to 730. We talking about 11. Because they always had revivals. Like they, like, they, they, like they kept losing all the time because they had to be revived again. <laughs> I got visions right now of those wooden benches. Oh, man. And the wooden floor where they, you know, they didn't have drums. And my, my grandmother had a triangle. My mother played tambourine. Yeah. And then they had a, 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 a washboard with, with a spoon. That was that percussion. That's what I remember. Yeah. Trade was an option. It was mandatory. I mean, what happened when I when, 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 when I obeyed my parents and, and oh, well, I had no choice. <laughs> you know, you're gonna do it or else. You didn't want the else. You know, right? But I have walked in so much favor with God because what was on them got off on me. I'm favored because my parents were favored because they were obeying God. You are required to train your children in things of the spirit, things of God. Make them come to you. Now, I don't feel, you don't feel like nothing. You going to church. I don't feel good. Come to church and get healed. You know, say, say do that. That, 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 that I'm, I'm still trying to grasp. I'm not going to church because I don't feel good. But the church is where you can be healed. You get around people of like faith that can agree with you and stamp you against that thing and break that thing down to the ground and get your healing. I have people grab me all the time in between Sunday school, Sunday school and, and they've been back to the pastor. Pray for me, man. And I mean, God healed them instantly, right back there in the fellowship hall. And one room, I mean, instantaneously, they, they pressed to get here and got a miracle instantaneously. Why? Because they made an effort. 
How easy are you discouraged? Or looking for an excuse? I pass you need to get back on greater things. <laughs> this is how you're going to walk in greater things. He says now, he says that he, he feared God, all this house. How many in this house? Yeah, all this house. And uh, what else did he do? Let me find you. And he gave alms, much alms to the people. And those are people that he didn't, he didn't, he didn't say the poor. I'm sure he gave to the poor, but he said he gave armed people, much arms. He, was, he, was a, he had a prayer life, and he was a giver. Watch this, people of God. In verse number three, he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the, of the, of the day, an angel of God coming into him. I, man, that's a good time to run. You, 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 you can be bad all you want. You sitting in, in your room and somebody walk in that didn't open my door? <laughs> I'm just talking to real people. There would be some noise in that room. It'd be me trying to get up out of there. He's going to run out to say, peace. He said, fear not, fear not. He better talk loud. <laughs> and look in verse, saying unto him, Cornelius, look in verse 4. This is so powerful. This is what, what, what I, I, I want you to see. And when he looked on him, he was, yeah, afraid. And said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers. Thy what? Thy prayers. And thine what arms are thine given have come up for what? A memorial. Now, when I, when, I, when I read that, the Lord said, his prayers and his giving had come up for review. Now, most of you in here have worked on jobs. When you first get in, get, you know, uh, start working at, at a company, uh, you get what's called either a 60 or what, a 90 day what? And they what, review what you have done, your performance for those first 90 days. And they bless you or they release you. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Depending on what? Your performance. He said, Cornelius, your review has come up before God. What am I saying? Some of you have been praying for a while. And it looks like nothing has changed. But I want to encourage you today. Your review... It's coming up. Now watch this now. God's going to look at what you've been saying and doing in the rear. Because you get reviewed on what you what? Done. And if you fainted and quit and threw in the towel and complained the whole time, that's not going to be a good review. But when he see your what? Faithfulness. That's what he said. He said, this man here, this man, he has been faithful to pray and to, and to give much and make sure his house feared God too. And that's why God said, now it's time to introduce you to the Holy Ghost. 
Go get Peter. He said, your review has come up. You've been giving, you've been tired, you've been giving an offering. And just like my men, your finance hadn't changed for a while. Lord, I'm giving. It looks like nothing, nothing, nothing's changed. I'm, I'm, I'm giving more than, than I'm getting back. But let me tell you what. Your review is coming up. Glory to God. My word you is keep doing what you're doing. Because it's your faithfulness that's going to get the eye of God. And also, you notice you don't on, on the job. Uh, everybody's review don't come at the same time. Depending, depending on when you join the company. And this is, and this, you know what? This it's been it's been about a year now. Let me let's, let's, let's go back and look at uh, Diane's record or history. See what she, she she's done the last twelve months. And then based on the review. But let's see, she was, she came late, left early, <laughs> and took long lunches. <laughs> Don't look good. Can't give her an increase. Matter of fact, it's hard, me, hard to just keep her. When God pulls up your records to review what you've been doing the last six months, what can he bless you on? You were standing in faith, but then you started wavering. He said, I was going to do that for them because they asked me to do it, but... They're not sitting in the same place. They're not sitting at the same level of believing. They done backed off on me now. That's why the people got that, that chapter in Luke 18 is so powerful. About the woman in the unjust judge. And the Bible said down in that eighth verse, it said, and, it said, and when Jesus said, and when I come, will I find this kind of faith in the earth? Somebody that won't back off no matter how many no's they get. She wouldn't quit. Each one of us, whatever you believe in God for, God let you go for a seat. It may be a year. I share about, I share about, about, about the woman that, that had the, uh, a child that was deformed every day for 13 years. She get up and grab that child by the, by, by the arm and, 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 and put up and say, walk in Jesus' name. Child just fall back to the ground and come on the ground. She did it for every day for 13 years, woke up one morning and heard music. And the child was in there on the piano, playing the piano, totally and completely made whole. Her review came up. It was, Lord Jesus, 13 years? It's better late than never. See, what, what discourages you so easy that you can't hang in there? If you have a word from God, you know it can't lie. It's going to happen. But you got to be there until God reviews your record and says, yes, it's time. And all of a what? Suddenly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what's going to happen this year. That you've been standing, you've been believing, you've been, you've been faithful in, in doing what you're supposed to do. And God said, this year I am going to cause your time. That's what, that's what he said. Uh, it's time. So you're in the right year. You're in the right year. You want to hear God say, it's time. He pulls your record. He's been watching you. He watched this man. The Bible didn't tell how long Cornelius 
was doing this. It just says his, his review came up. And God called a man from another city to come to his house and preach the gospel and get them saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Everybody that was in the house. Because he got a good review. When you look at your giving, is it consistent? You tithe like you're supposed to? Are you, are, are you in rebellion? And the Bible said rebellion is a sin, a sin of what? Witchcraft. Huh? And stubbornness is as a sin of iniquity and idolatry. You know, you know what the Lord spoke to me? He said, he said, son, if you want to know the bottom line for what rebellion is, it's just somebody trying to control me. I told them how I wanted. They're trying to tell me how they want it. They're not going to do it because it's not what they want to do. So they, they, they're trying to control me to get me to change. That's what witchcraft. Witchcraft is about what? Control. So when a man rebels against what God has said, his commandment, God said, you're trying to control me. That ain't going to happen. You bust hell wide open first. Y'all stop running again. <laughs> well, I just don't think we ought to be doing it now that, 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 you know, we're not under the law. When he instituted it, it wasn't under the law. Can you read Genesis? The man that God used to get salvation to you was Abraham. And Abraham was a tither. There wasn't no law then. He hadn't changed. That's why I started me. I guess to the degree when, when, when uh, I was listening to you know, Brother Mike Murdoch, and he said, you know, people ask me sometimes if I think, you know, people that don't tithe go to heaven. I said, not in the least. They aren't going. I go, whoa. He said, he says, because they're in rebellion. And there is no rebellion in heaven. You're not going to tolerate that when you're trying to control him. That's witchcraft. It's like one of our child trying to get us to change, make us do something. And, and we done laid, laid our rules down. And, and they, 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 they try to make us change the rule by what? Disobeying our rules. And try to keep pressure on us by not doing it uh, to, 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 to try to make us change to what that desire is. I feel your love. <laughs> this is deep, saints. I'm not going to sit here and fool you to, to, to make you think that just anything go. God, God understands. God understands what he said. He told Saul, Saul, you are fired as king. I gave you an instruction. You only get part of it. Part of an instruction not done is just like not doing none of it. I told you to kill everything. Women, men, children, animals, everything. And here you come with this king up in my face, and I hear all these sheep going bad, bad. And look how you, look, look how you try to justify. Well, Lord, we kept those animals because we're going to offer them as sacrifices to you. He said, he said, he said to obey me is better than. I don't care about your sheep. Well, you done disobeyed me. You know what God gave me Friday night? He said, turn it up. Amp it up. Whatever you've been doing, it's time to turn it up. If you're going to see the, the, the greater in 2015, you've got to turn it up. You, 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 you can't go busy. You, 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 it's time to come to another level of commitment. If we saw some of the saints in other countries, how they serve God with, with, with total abandonment and commitment and, and zeal, we'd be ashamed to even call ourselves a saint. 
because we become complacent and laid back and you know, God understands. I don't think it take all that. And we wonder why nothing's happening for us. Because God does what, does what we do. You know what he told Saul? Through Sam, he said, because you have rejected my commandments, I have rejected you as king of Israel. God does what we, we do. And we try to control God by disobeying his laws or his, his commandments. God said, you can do it, but there's a consequence for it. I'm not going to change. I meant what I said when I said it. If you don't give your tithe, you got a curse on you, period, bottom line. You're not going to change me. So my giving, when he read, when he read my history, he goes, man, I had a new house for him. Just can't get that. Because they're robbing me blind right to my face with my eyes open. Now, if you rob God with, God with his eyes open, you know, and he see you coming. What you do to me when I can't see you? About integrity. Do you love God? Uh, that's a quick answer. Let me, just, let, let, let me qualify that answer. Qu qualify that statement. Do, 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 do you love God? Okay, that's what you say. Do you love God enough to do whatever he tells you to do? Uh-huh. then trust me, you will be tested. Because God requires us to lose ourselves to find him. See, as I'm busy seeking him, all this other stuff, it gets taken care of. So I don't have no other agenda except God. He said, this man always prayed. His memorial came up that he had a prayer life. He always prayed and he, and he always gave. He prayed and gave. 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 Prayed and, gave and then God gave. God picked him out of all the Gentiles. He started with him, Cornelius. Up that time, the God was on being preached to the Jews, right? And God said, I found a man amongst the Gentiles. His record shows he'd been fearing me for years, and he got his whole family doing the same thing, and he'd been just giving to the people, blessing the people. I'll start with him. And to this day, people know Cornelius. Put a man in a trance that they want nothing to do with no Gentile. Rev. Peter. Put that brother in a trance. Lord, the sheets down and told him, hey, whatever I've called clean, don't you call unclean. Did it to him several times. Then he get, walk, got him up out of the trance and said, said now go. Two, two, two men coming to get you. Go with them. I got somebody I, I want you to preach to. God went through all those changes because he found a man. When his resume came up, when, the, when his review came up, he saw what he liked. And he blessed that man accordingly. What does God see when he pull up your review? Will he still find you faithful? You've been believing and confessing the word of God all this time, and you haven't waved, you're still saying the same thing? You've been giving and giving and giving, even though it looked like ain't nothing really changing? But now God looking at, at the books, he likes what he sees. And all of a sudden, it's going to be those this year. It's going to be those this year. 
So much so you're going to be amazed, astonished, in awe of God. Because this is the year of the greater. So greater things are going to happen this year. If thou wouldest, believe. Thou shouldest see the glory of God. Have I helped you any? Would you stand, please? Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, there I go again. You open my mouth. You start saying things. But it's, it's to help. You know, that was a book that I, I introduced you to. You, the girl from uh, uh, Korea. What was her name? Uh, um, the book is about heaven, too. Uh, what was her name? I forgot her name now. From uh, Korea. Uh, was it Cho? Cho? Chu. Is that her name? Is that the one? She was from, a, not, not, uh, not, not, not Baxter. It's, it's, the, it's the other guy. Her name is Cho Chu or something. Anyways. Who? Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. In, in a book, in a book, you know, she, the, the, the Lord took her to heaven and, and to hell. Both places. He took her to heaven and he took her to hell and showed her her relatives, including her, her father. He didn't make it. And then she, he took her to heaven and showed her a lot of things about heaven. Then he showed her, she, she showed her this group of people that was outside the gate. And she asked him, what, who are these people? He said, these are the people that, that would not tithe. They didn't get in. I said, man, that's deep. Why? It's rebellion. It's stubbornness. God, I don't care what you say. I'm not, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna conform to me. I'm not conforming to you. That's why he called it idolatry because it's about self. It's about me. Having it my way. That's dangerous. When he, when he holds all the cards. <laughs> and once you've been given revelation, you are, you are what? On obligation. Once revelation comes, you are obligated to the revelation. And we've been preaching this real nice gospel that you got to understand. People, God, 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 God don't roll like that. His word is his word. Uh, now we can all just go out and do whatever we, we want to. That's what people thought when they, when they talked this, talk this thing about the once saved, all, always saved business. You just live in kind of life and still make it in. Woo-wee. Well, that's dangerous. Gonna be a, well, some people have already found out. That didn't work. Because they're Christians in hell. You say, born again people? Uh huh. Born again just connects you. You still gotta live. Working out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. You can't get, get saved and live any kind of life. Or that would none of us be a church. We watch a football game. A savior, Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We know who didn't make it to the playoffs, don't we? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hi, Cynthia. How you doing, girl?
uh, take God at his word. He meant what he said when he said what he said. Don't let nobody fool you. Paul said, if anybody come preaching any other gospel, what I'm preaching, you better back off from that. Because it's got error in it somewhere. You can take what I'm preaching, go, go to the word of God and look it up. God don't play. I respect God with all of my heart, spirit, soul, mind, and body. I fear me some God. All right? He's a forgiving God. But you better pray he has enough mercy on you to give you time to f- repent. Right now, man, there are people dropping dead. Preachers too. Preachers. Preachers. Why would Paul say, I preach to others, but then I, my own self, am a castaway? I don't even get in. I don't preach you in, I don't get in. And we know Paul was saved. Don't let nobody fool you, rope a dope you. You got to live this life on a daily basis. God is serious about who he wants around him. He wants clean hands and clean hearts. I see people, uh, what, what, what was happening, remember, remember I shared in one of uh, other sessions that uh, each, one of, each one of us has a customized journey and that um, uh, he had you born in a certain house because of what he wanted in you from those parents. But see, these, these are my holiness roots popping up now. Because they taught you holiness of hell. So I'm, what, what I'm teaching right now is holiness, a separate life unto God. That's my holding his roots popping up now. You can't just live any kind of life and God going to be okay with that. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to walk the chalk line on the narrow path every now and then. There's another one. Been a, oh, uh, there's another one. But on that broad path that leads to destruction, shoulder to shoulder, going in droves. Hear what I'm saying today. This is my first message of the new year. You're going to walk in the greater? You got to amp it up. You got to turn it up to a whole nother level so God can do greater things in our lives. It's serious, saints. I ain't live all this time out here that didn't miss it. I don't like heat to live. You see, I got this time I'm sweating all the time because the lights are hot and we got the heat on for the sake of, you know, people that, you know, um, think it's cold out there or something, you know. All right? But let's not tempt God by assuming he'll accept anything. If he wouldn't let a priest come into that Holy of Holies without having prepared himself, he would drop dead right there in front of that altar. The Ark of the Covenant. They put ropes around the waist of the priest, so if he dropped dead, they wouldn't go in there and get and drop dead themselves. They pull that brother out by the rope, and they had they had bells on the end of his garment. If, if they heard those bells stop, that means homeboy. It was over. They just pull that rope, Sit and get the next person. Is that serious or what? It's serious, saints. This is, not a, this is not a game. This is your life on the line. 
Be committed to something. Commit yourself to God. Commit to to his way of doing things. And then watch God show up for you. He said, he said, turn it up. Amp it up. So I can show up. And you'll walk in the greater this year. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't want to I don't want to assume that anybody everybody here is saved. I don't want to assume that everybody here is not is just not in a backslidden condition. I'm going to I'm going to offer the invitation. Because somebody might have just slipped in. That was searching. Looking for answers. You've tried the world, you've tried drugs, alcohol, sex, everything else, and you're still not satisfied. It's because you will not be satisfied until Christ is in your life. God reserves a place in you that can't nothing or nobody feel. And you won't be satisfied until he is in your life. And I want to offer you an opportunity today to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come on, make that step today that I'm going to change my life. I'm, I'm not going out like this. There's a God who loves me. So much that he had a son come and die in my place. Can you imagine somebody come die in your place? I ain't saying I do that for you. But God did. And all men have to just come and accept him as his Lord and his Savior. And God will, will, will forgive him of his sins and clean his slate like he had never done nothing. Paul said, my, my conscience is clear. You know, Paul, uh, you know, Paul was a, some kind of fella. He had the saints killed and all kind of stuff. But he said, my conscience is clear. Why? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. What you've done don't matter now. You come into Christ, God wipes your slate clean like you've never done nothing. Just as if you've never sinned. You're going to find ex-murderers up in heaven. Because they got born again. And God wiped that slate clean. Now they may have to go, now they probably had, had to go through the penal system to, anyway. But they were free inside. That's why we go into the prison and the jails to preach to these, these guys. Male and female, they need to know Christ. They might be in jail, but they, but, but they can be free in that spirit. Until they get out, if, if they get out, depending on what they've done, that's a soul that needs Jesus. You may be born again, but, you, but you're in a backsliding condition. You walked away from God for whatever the reason. Don't let pride, don't let fear, don't let embarrassment, a shame, keep you from making the correction in your life. I'd rather go to heaven embarrassed than go to hell full of pride. That's opportunity today for you to get it right. You that are watching by internet, same thing. Right where you are, you can receive Christ into, into your life. You can repent today. You have to go through the rest of this year playing rest and roulette with your life. God loves us. He loves so much he died for us. You want somebody to pray with you? There's an email address area right there. You can email this ministry. There's a phone number right there. You can leave a message. We will get back with you. And make sure you got the proper starting instructions. Get information to you. So you you start with a good, solid foundation in in the things of God. We want you in the family. Bible says hell is enlarging itself, not for not for the devil, but for us. I ain't going. (laughs) 
Maybe you're not baptized in, in the Holy Spirit for whatever, the, you know, you might, you're born again, but you haven't been filled with the Spirit. Well, you just completely immersed in the power of God, his presence all, all, all over you, where even your toenails are anointed. Then he gives you a language you can communicate with the Father from your spirit. Your head can go so far, and then it, 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 it comes to a, a, a conclusion. And you find yourself repeating yourself over and over again, well, I haven't run out. But you pray out of your spirit. Give your spirit a chance to pray. Give your spirit a chance to pray. You gave your head a chance to pray. You can give your spirit a chance to pray. Because your, 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 spirit your, spirit, your spirit wants to communicate with the Father. You don't know what all that, that your spirit won't want, want to say to him. That's why God gave us a language so we can communicate with the spirit of the spirit and speak out mysteries and secrets. But why would he call them mysteries and secrets if we knew them? We don't know them. But the Father knows in our spirit. Man, they know, why? Because the Holy Ghost is inside of our belly. He wants to fellowship with the Father through your spirit. And that's all the part of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So you can fellowship with the Father out of your spirit, bypassing your head. That's available. Maybe you don't have a church home. I'm just biased. This is a good church. Bottom line. One thing you guaranteed up in here, truth. I ain't going to lie to you. And I ain't going to back down because you you look at me wrong. Because I ain't scared of you. God told me back in the book of Ezekiel chapter 2 and Jeremiah also, he said, I will make your head as hard as theirs. Don't be moved by their looks. That's why I just preach what I hear. Let the chips fall where they may. Go home get my laser boy. But if you're here today, you're not connected, or you're out of fellowship with the Lord, or you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or you need a church home, or you just need prayer. Come on. It's your time. Get what you need, praise God. It's free. Many times it's good. Now, all stuff that's free is not good. But in this instance, this is good. Come, in, in, anybody else? It's your time. Let the Spirit of God minister to you. Let the power of the Holy Ghost minister t- to you. I'm just a vessel, an instrument, a tool in the hand of God. I'm just available, that's all. Come on, bless you. Anybody else? It is your time. Anybody else? You that are watching by internet, like I said, you can go to the email or just call that phone number, leave a message. And we'll get back with you. But you need to know Christ. You got a prayer concern? Send it to us. We'll pray for you. Pray with you. Agree with you. It's your time for a miracle. The miraculous is the ram that you want to walk in. Because the God I serve can do anything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Now you're going to bring that fan back, right? (laughs) Hallelujah. Holy, break the bondage. Holy. Let the anointing flow and let the power of God set me free. Holy Spirit, move in the midst. Holy Spirit, break the bondage. Let the anointing flow 
Somebody give God a praise up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And he is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Be seated for a moment. We're going to receive from the Lord's table. We cut covenant on, on, on New Year's Eve night, sealing that word, uh, the, the year of the greater. And uh, Jesus said in, in, in John 1.40, I mean 150, he said greater things. He said, and greater works. He told us in John 14.12, 
He said, and these works shall ye do also and greater works. So we're going to be doing greater things. And God will be doing greater things. It's just going to be a greater year. His glory shall be seen in 2015. Hallelujah. And so we want to just, you know, uh, uh, cut covenant again in this, in this area. The Lord be, would let me go anywhere else and go back to my, 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 my five slices. He want me to, to uh, kind of hammer this in from uh, New Year's Eve night about the, the, the word for, for this house. And uh, to also uh, make sure you, you were uh, uh, encouraged in fact that, that uh, your review is coming up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so your faithfulness and your continuation, in spite of what you've been going through, is not going unnoticed. God is going to reward you, and all of us, certainly, you're going to see God move for you. So keep doing what you're doing if what you're doing is right. I had to say it like that. Keep doing what you're doing if what you're doing is right. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Just like people, you know, practice made perfect. Practice made perfect if, if, the, if the practice is right. You, you, it can make you perfectly wrong or perfectly right. So you got to make, make sure you're doing what, the right thing so God can, 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 can bless you. You don't want to be demoted. You want to be promoted. Hallelujah. So we come today to honor the commandments of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was his instruction that we do this. He said often. We used to do it just on first Sunday. The Lord told us to do it every first and third Sunday here. And so we all obeyed the instruction uh, that God gave us. And um, uh, it's all about covenant. Jesus said the least you can do is, be re is to, to, to remind yourselves of what I did for you to have what you have. I did the hard work. I died. Took a beating. All you got to do is just drink a little juice, eat a little bread. To remind yourself again that it was a priceless price paid for us to be where we are right now. Some of us here, we were on drugs, alcohol, and all this kind of stuff, and look at it, we're, we're, we're free. Free from, free from, whom the Son sets free. It's free indeed. Free. He'll do it, people of God. He'll do it for you. So we come to remind ourselves again that God loves us. This is love. That's all it is, is love. God so loved the word that he gave. And he said, now all, all I want you to do is love and give too. And then you'll be following in my footsteps. And I'll be able to show my love by you showing love. That's how I show my love, by you showing love to people. You're the human contact to people. And so God needs us. And so we, we remind ourselves, this was not cheap. This cost God everything. And that's why we don't take it lightly. It is serious business. Father, that's much love here for you. You didn't have to do it. But then also, love compelled you to do it. Because love is about giving. And in giving your son, you gave us life. Not just life, but life more abundantly. And then, Lord, you told us this year it's going to be greater. Greater things, greater works. It's the year to greater. And then you told us to amp it up, turn it up. And you do what we do. So, Father, we just submit and commit ourselves to the word for this house this year, O oh God, that your glory shall be seen in 2015. Because we will believe and we expect to see the glory of God in this year, O oh God. Father, sanctify us. Separate us from unto. We repent of any unforgiven sins in our lives. So, Lord, it's all about you. Let your blood Wash us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Father, even those who watch my internet, let them confess, repent, release, and apply your blood on their lives for victory over whatever area they have struggles in, oh God. Let them see victory in those areas as we take of this covenant, oh God. Lord, the benefits are everything. When you died, you gave, up every, you gave up everything so that we could have everything. We embrace that. We receive that. We take ownership of that. We thank you, Father God, for a good report when our review come up. Because you are just good like that. And we bless you for it. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Independence Day Independence Day Independence Day Lord Independence Day Through the blood of the Lamb Freedom from poverty Freedom from death, hell, and the grave. Freedom from bondages. Independence Day. Oh, Lord, Lord. Independence Day. Because he lives in me. He wrote them on my mind. He speaks to me. Always keeps me in line. Independence Day. Oh Lord, Lord, Independence Day. I'm free through. I'm washed in the blood. Hey. I am delivered, yeah, to the blood. Woo, I am free, Lord, to the blood. Hey, I am washed in the blood. Oh, I am delivered, yeah, through the blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am free, Lord. Through the blood. Hey, I am washed in the blood. Well, well, I am delivered, yeah. Through the blood. Well, 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 I am free, Lord. Through the blood. Hey, I am washed in the blood. Hey, 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 I am delivered, yeah. Through the blood. Well, 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 well. Independence Day. Independence Day. Independence Day, Lord, 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 Independence Day, we got the victory. Independence Day, Lord, oh, Lord, Lord, Independence Day, we won, we won. Independence Day, Lord, 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 Independence Day, we got the victory. Independence Day, oh, Lord, Lord. Independence Day, we got the victory. Independence Day, hey, hey, hey. Independence Day, all right. Independence Day, ow. Independence Day, we free now. Independence Day, 
is our 4th of July. Independence is our June 19th. Independence, that's what we got. Independence, we want to have some fun. Independence, hey, Independence Day. We got the victory. Independence Day, love, 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 love. Independence Day. Everyone been served that wants to be served? We don't leave anybody out. If you have a challenge with the opening of the containers, sometimes they will do that. It's less frequent now. They did something different, but it's less frequent now. They're easy to open, and so we want everybody to participate. It's cutting the deal. We're about to seal. It's time, Carol. It's time. It's time. You agree, Jay? It's time. Hallelujah. The review came up. Hallelujah. It's time. He says, amazing, Cynthia, and astonishing things this year. Hallelujah. God is about to have the last laugh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Take of the bread and eat and the cup and drink. You receive? Then it's done. Would you stand to your feet, please? As you come to the inside out. I'm free. I'm free. I'm washed. In. I am delivered. Yeah. Through. Well, 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 well. Independence Day. Uh huh. Uh huh. Independence Day. We got the victory. Independence Day. Lord, 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 Lord. Independence Day. It's time to give yeah. the money. Just keep on coming. All these rich folk up in the air with all this moolah. All them Benjamins. Praise the Lord. Well, y'all already got the scripture. Your giving is coming up for a review. Make sure God can increase you. Hallelujah. <laughs> or oh, it's a good day to make a change. Hallelujah. Don't tempt him. Just obey him. Don't partially obey. Same as not obeying. Hallelujah. Me and I'm a little bit in now. They were able to assist you. Pepper you up your gifts. I can help you with the spelling. Just let me know. $406,000 from now, we have this building paid for. Hey. We was at six hundred fifteen thousand. We're down to four hundred and six. Now, if you want to write the balance today, uh, just go ahead, as long as it's good. Now, we don't play basketball up in here. So we want that bouncing around, all right? Praise the Lord. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Well, I decree. Because you're not trying to control God. You got a good review coming up. In your finances. Hallelujah. You receive that? Everybody ready? You still writing? I don't want nobody to. Well, don't worry about it. If, if they pass you by, just sit down and write as long as it takes. <laughs> we, we, we are not in that big a hurry. <laughs> Bring it in the house. I receive to pay all pay all the money, 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 money. Just keep on coming to pay all. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, we can do this. I receive, I receive, I believe we can do this. I receive, pay all, pay all, I receive the money. Just keep on coming. I receive. The pay off. Pay off the money, 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 money. Just keep on I receive. The pay off. Pay off. I receive. I, I, I receive. Yes, man. I believe we can do this. I receive. Pay off. I receive. Pay off the I, I receive. Believe. I believe we can do this. Pay off. Pay off. I receive. The money I receive, oh Lord, the pay off, the money, 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 money. Just keep on coming. It just keeps on coming and coming and coming and coming. That's just how God rolls. Now, Father, we lift these gifts of love to you in great appreciation and gratitude. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be able to give into the kingdom of God, to sow into what you ordained for our lives. Nothing but goodness. Great blessings, oh God. We thank you right now, our high priest, he receives our gifts, he now worship you with our giving. As a result, the windows of heaven, they are open above, and the blessed put we have room left to receive it. Thank you, Father God, because of our faithfulness and our giving, we're up for a good review. And we thank you for the increase that's coming on our lives, oh God. The money just keep on coming. Greater blessings. Greater finances, oh God. Manifested this year in our lives, oh God. Thank you for favoring us with your goodness, oh God. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And all who agree said. And when they gave, they prayed. Praise God, praise God. God is. He's good. He's good. He's good. All the time.